other thing I want to call attention to is that one 1948 red line right down the center, that's the launch of the ICD-6, which many people regard as the the uh, most seminal, if you will, sea change moment in the ICD. And that is in 1948 when the ICD added for the first time uh, mental and nervous diseases. Before that time, it was only physical disorders, only physical diseases. But in 1948, it added mental and nervous diseases. They're now called MBDs, mental and behavioral disorders. That's surely what you know them by. But then they were called mental, psychoneurotic, and personality disorders. Very important to keep in mind, 1948. Now, if you think about it, what was happening in 1948? Well, it was just after something called World War II. World War II reconfigured the planet undeniably. But one of its implications was it gave a major boost to the mental health professions, particularly to psychiatry and to psychology. Why? Because millions and millions and millions of people were dis disgorged back to their home from the fighting front, back to their homes in a pre-printing uh, printing press era for psychodiagnosis. There was no sing single common global nomenclature for mental disorders. France had one, Paris had a different one. The United States had three different systems within this one country. Nobody had the same thing as Zimbabwe. Germany was different. Uh, the uh, Australian New Zealand was different. Every single country had their own system. Nobody could agree on anything. It was a Tower of Babel. So we had no common nomenclature, just like before the printing press, there was no common way of spelling or forming characters or letters. And if you look back at old stuff in the early printing press days, you'll even see things like U's look like V's and F's look like S's. It was before there was a global standardization. The same is true in psychodiagnosis. There was no common nomenclature post-World War II. So the World Health Organization decided in 1948 to add mental and behavioral disorders so that we'd have a common nomenclature that everyone could use. Now, at that time, the single most powerful, and arguably still is, well-known, recognized, and respected psychiatric association on the planet was the American Psychiatric Association. And they had a couple of reactions to the addition of mental and nervous diseases in the DS, I mean, in the ICD. And the predominant one was, wow, wow, wow. I don't want to say that they took umbrage, but it did occur to them that the train was leaving the station without them. They were, after all, the American Psychiatric Association. So for the World Health Organization to move for, forward with a global system of psychodiagnosis, a common nomenclature, an agreed upon taxonomy, without the voice of the American Psychiatric Association was heretical. So what did they do? Well, the American Psychiatric Association went to Geneva, the home of the World Health Organization, and they knocked on the door. Yes, who's there? It's the American Psychiatric Association. What would you like? And they told them what we'd like. We would like to borrow your F codes. I mean, they weren't F codes at that time, but we would like to borrow your mental and behavioral disorders. Why do you want them? Well, they told them why they wanted them. They said, if you will loan us your F codes, your mental and behavioral disorders, we will create a full-blown psychodiagnostic system just for mental health disorders, not for physical health disorders. Uh, and we will create behaviorally oriented criteria we will create thick descriptive information about prognosis and comorbidity and culture, gender, all of this stuff. And we'll put it into a single book, a manual, a diagnostic manual of mental disorders. Well, the World Health Organization said they agreed. They said, go forth in, in, in Vulcan-esque, Spock-esque fashion, go forth and prosper. You may take our codes. However, there was a caveat. You may borrow our codes, but remember, they are our children. You can play with our children. You can nourish our children. You can coddle our children. You can interact with our children. You can develop our children, develop, but we are not transferring custodial rights to you, which means, among many other things, you may never, 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 never 
come up with a new edition of your manual unless it articulates with a new edition of our ICD manual. Why? Because you are never allowed to scoop us. We can only scoop you. You can revise your old edition, but you can't come up with a new one unless we come up with a new one first. It has to, your new one has to articulate with ours. So that's why the DSM-3 uh, R was not DSM-4, why the DSM-4 TR was not 5. It wasn't allowed to be. And it's why the DSM-5 TR is TR and is not six. It's not allowed to be six. I won't belabor what you know, and that is that the DSM did go about taking the four years between 1948 and 52 and developing its own system. It launched in 52, and it's been revised between six and every seven to 17 years since then, whenever it needed it. I don't ever see it waiting another 17 years. Too much is changing too quickly. <laughs> Thank you.